everyone. It's Friday morning and I am coming to you live from Battleground, Washington, holding the Hope Central. I'm very dissatisfied with my camera quality, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway because what the heck. So, I'm so distracted by this, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. So, what are we going to talk about today? Well, First of all, Happy New Year. It's Friday morning, it's February 5th, it's the first Friday in February, and I wanted to let you know that I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be doing Friday morning lives every Friday morning at 10.30. And hopefully I won't be as distracted by such a blurry camera, but we'll figure it out and, um, and I will sort it out and we'll do better. I'm just gonna stop looking at myself and look at you, and then I won't notice how blurry I am. I want to talk today about what's going to be happening for you for the next uh, for the next three months of Fridays. I have a plan. I have a schedule of topics that I'm going to be talking about, and surprisingly enough, they're based on the CARES Toolkit. If you're not familiar with the CARES Toolkit, it's been around for a while, Holding the Hope. Uh, we created this, and along with uh, Stephanie Lane and I put this together. and. So this particular video today, I'm just going to keep going even though my nose is itching and my face is blurry because you know what, sometimes you just have to keep going in life, right? You just have to keep going. Things are not always perfect and you just have to keep going. That's your lesson for today. And you'll see, I'm not in my office. I'm here in my kitchen and you can see my living room in the background because we're doing things a little bit different. And um, so I thought, let's have a little different setting um, because sometimes we just need to move. So I don't know about you guys, but when I move my um, when I move my physical location, sometimes it just shifts what's going on in my head, and I can work better. So I sometimes, if I'm really stuck in my office, I'll come out and sit at my at my living room at my in my uh, kitchen at the kitchen table, and get some work done here. That's what I do, and it's, it's very. It's the last couple of days, it's been really helpful. So what are we going to talk about today? We're talking about advocating for yourself at work. As peer supporters, oftentimes we find ourselves as change agents. You come into an agency and maybe they don't know exactly what it is that peer supporters do, or maybe they don't know exactly how to incorporate peer support into the work that you currently do, or maybe they've had peer support for a long time, but there's been a little bit of drift in with regards to alignment with the recovery principles. Um, for the SAMHSA guiding principles of recovery. And you come in and you're the new kid and you notice all this and um, maybe you're asked to do some stuff that you're like, well, that's not what peer supporters do. And so you start to feel frustrated and you start to feel disrespected and you start to feel um, unappreciated. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. I've heard it happens. And so I wanted to talk to you about that a little bit because I think, first of all, Oftentimes, for many folks, being a peer supporter is the first job we've had as adults, right? It's our first real job, and so we're like excited to have the job. But at the same time, there's some skills that come with being an employee that you may not be familiar with. Or maybe it's not your first job, maybe it's just been a long time since you've been had a job, or maybe this is just your first job in social services. Either way, I want you to understand that Doing the work that you're hired to do and being an employee are very different skill sets, okay? So you could be a fantastic peer support specialist and a pain in the rear employee, and you're gonna lose your job because if you're a pain in the rear employee, your employer is gonna say, see you later. Now, I don't want that to happen. So I wanna talk about ways that we can advocate for ourselves at work and advocate for our our positions at work without being told to go away. I'm wondering if this might have happened to you, right? And 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 some here's what I, I think I get both times is we get people get burnt out and they just leave the job, or worse, they get burnt out and they stay, and that affects their ability to be good peer support specialists. Um, and then, or they um, they just comply. They just comply with whatever is being told to them, even though there's a part of them that knows this is not right. This isn't this isn't what I this isn't what I want to do. This isn't what I think peer supporters are supposed to do. This is just not the way that everything is supposed to roll out here. 
Um, this is not what I signed up for, right? This is not what I what I did all this for. My life experience has value, and I really am. I'm really invested in making sure that it's uh, respected, and that and that what happens in my job is a reflection of of the the skills and the experiences that I have to offer. So, um, let's talk about it now. What are some things you can do? I'm not going to I'm not going to give you detailed instructions because quite frankly every job is different, every work environment is different, every worker is different, every boss is different, every executive director is different. But I'm going to give you some general ways to keep your job. I think it's important. And the first thing that you need to do is to understand your place in this landscape of employees and landscape of positions. So getting to know your environment is probably the most important thing you can do. And I call this the assessment stage. So you come in, you've got this job, you love this job, you start doing this job and you start noticing some problems with this job. And you start noticing some places that things aren't quite right. And you start noticing that um, you just start noticing some stuff because once the you know the the loveliness wears off, you still have to get up in the morning and and go right. And so, so the question is to not only assess what you're seeing, but I want you to really assess the entire context of the issue that you're that you're experiencing. Think about it from the perspective of every other person involved in that. Think about it from the perspective of your boss. Think about it from the perspective of whoever created this situation or this type of environment. Who, what happened here and how did it happen and why did it happen? So that you can understand how it's playing out and what are maybe the intended or unintended consequences of what's happening right in front of you. Is it really affecting the peers that you're working with or is it just annoying you? Um, I need you, so, so there's an external assessment that needs to be made is, what's going on in this agency and how did we get to where we are and is this something that i need to bring up so you got to kind of do the assessment and then you have to do an internal assessment and you have to say is this really important or is this just me trying to sound important because i'm going to point out what's what's wrong with that the problem with that is i i love it when people say that the problem with that is well let's what about the what's what's right with that And what are the alternatives? So I really need you to do an internal assessment of what are your motives. Um, And it has to be something that you don't do in five minutes. This is something, this assessment process should be the longest part of the whole process, is where you're assessing the external situation. You're assessing the uh, the issue that has you kind of challenged. And you're assessing your internal motivation and your internal reaction. Right, because I really feel like oftentimes when things happen to us, we react because we don't want to learn. Right, we don't want to really look at what's going on with us internally. When things hit us internally, we think, Well, that's just wrong. And I would like you to just kind of stop and go, Is it or is it me? And I don't really want to face this because this is something I've never wanted to face before. So that's the assessment stage. Now, the next stage is confirmation. You need to, con- it, it, you, so first of all, I don't know about you guys, but there are days when my brain and my assessment is a dangerous neighborhood, right? You need to get out of that neighborhood because it is not serving you. You will get hurt. So you really, oftentimes we need to confirm our internal decisions and our internal assessments with somebody else outside of us. We need to talk to people that we trust and say, here's what I'm seeing, and preferably outside the agency. Um, somebody who's in social services but doesn't work for you. And, um, and you need to really kind of confirm that this is a problem. This is, does that make sense to you? Like, does this sound right to you? And, and, then, and then what you need to do is um, perhaps there's a trusted person internally that you could have a conversation with, a very, uh, a very discreet conversation and um, with a very discreet person. And I'm not talking about your supervisor yet. I'm just talking about because at this point, you're still in the confirmation stage where you just want to confirm 
am I right? Or am I, is this something I need to back off of? Um, and, so, uh, and so that takes some discretion and that also takes time. Because choosing the people that you want to talk to is, is important. You don't, you're not just complaining, no. And you're not just you know, finding fault. You're really thinking about, is this something that I need to address? Or is this not something that I need to address? Now, there's a lot of reasons why internally we have to figure out, is this something I need to address? Um, we have moral compasses and we have, uh, some things are super obvious, you need to address it immediately. Other stuff, you, you really need to check yourself and say, What's going on here? Why, what is this? So check yourself internally and externally and get that confirmation from somebody else that this is something you might want to think about. This is something you might want to work on. You might want to do some more investigation on. And then um, when you have a pretty, you feel pretty comfortable with it. And if you pray, you've prayed about it. If you meditate, you've meditated about it. If, you, uh, if, if it has you up at night and you're having conversations in your head, too soon to act. You need to wait until that conversation stops and settles down because that's still the assessment process. You need to settle down and confirm that with other people. And you need to feel res resolute in your action. You need to have an inner peace with your action. So if you're still trying to figure out and you're having the conversations and you're going to get somebody and you're going to get somebody and you're going to have a, and you're going to get somebody fired or you're going to complain that that's not what we're talking about here, right? We're not talking about that. We're talking about something an issue that comes up that's going to impact your ability to do a good job as a peer support specialist or impact peers at your agency to be able to do recovery aligned work. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about values assessments. We're not talking about personality riffs. So, and the reason it's really important to do that and to, to really take that internal time, and believe me, if anybody who knows me and is hearing me say this, they're probably laughing hysterically, John Murphy, it's you, because I don't do that. <laughs> I didn't do that. I, I'm kind of a type person. And so I'm teaching you from my mistakes because I have really had to learn this the hard way. And, um, and I have learned it though, and I'm really pleased with myself. Sometimes I completely blow it, but other times I do a pretty good job. And remember, the goal here is to keep your job. <laughs> keep your job. So then the next step is, to, uh, is, is E, which is execute. And we're not gonna execute people, we're gonna execute a plan. Now what that pre, pre is, it means you gotta have a plan. Right? So in your confirmation stage, once you decide you confirm that this is an issue, you better have a plan as to how you're going to present it. And I will tell you right now, never present a problem to an employer or a boss without a potential solution. Right? Don't just take a problem and sit it in their lap and go, what are you going to do about it? That's not helpful. Right? And it doesn't make you a good employee. It makes you a pain in the butt employee. So what you want to do is you want to say, here's an issue I've noticed. And I've noticed it, and here are the times and the places I've noticed it. And this is why it's important to me. So you got, what did I see? Why is it important to me? And here's how I think we could shift things so that it works a little bit better and is more in alignment with the values of recovery, the principles of recovery, and the values of peer support. So it's not about you. It's not about them. It's about recovery. It's about helping people get well. And when you approach things from that place of recovery, nobody feels threatened, right? It's always trauma-informed. It's always hope-based. It's always respectful. So you need to have those guiding principles of recovery in your hand, and you need to look at them and say, yep, 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 yep. And then you have a conversation with your supervisor about, as I said, the things you've noticed, the values that you feel it, it, it compromises, and the solution that you have to help it. So that's the execution phase. That's when you go and you talk to your supervisor. You don't go and talk to the CEO. You don't go talk to the clinical manager. You talk to your immediate supervisor, and you try to have a conversation with that person and say to them, what are the barriers that you feel might 
happen about might be in the play, might be in the way of implementing the solution and how can I help you how can I the peer support employee help you this my supervisor to get past these barriers so you're not just throwing a problem in their lap and saying what are you gonna do about it you're actually asking them how can I help in this change now nobody likes change and people are gonna be like who do you think you are, the newcomer coming in here with all your fancy problems and your fancy ideas? You could just be like, well, I'm the newcomer and I have my own insight and you hired me because you liked my insight. And so I'm bringing it to my work and I'm bringing this to your attention. Now, when it comes to execution, it's not, it's not a one and done and you never get what you want the first time you have a conversation. I learned that the hard way too. It is a process. It might take three years, right? But the more that you bring things up to where they become visible, the more likely they are to be addressed. And if you have a reasonable expectation that things will get addressed, then people can have reasonable responses in how to do that. So when you come forward and you say, here's my issue and here's the solution, how can I help implement this? Um, they might say, I don't know. And you could be like, well, how do we figure this out? And then you create a plan with your supervisor as to what are the next steps. And here's a little tip, never leave one meeting without scheduling another. So this is not a, let's have this conversation and now I've told you how I feel and so I'm gonna go away now. This is really all about actually working with someone to resolve an issue. Which means you need to know how it's resolved. You need to know when you feel like this issue is being resolved, right? I used to be an ombudsman and what, what, what I quickly learned was to ask people, how will you know when this issue is resolved? Because they would come to me, we would resolve the issue and then five minutes later they'd come back to me with a new one because that one we resolved wasn't the real issue, right? So I want you to think about really clearly, how will you, when will you know and what's it gonna look like when this issue is resolved for you? And that's really important so that you're not just, you know, giving out vague solutions. It's very concrete, it's very specific, there's a clear result, and, and you, it's, it's part of your values, it's part of your recovery alignment, it's part of who you are as a peer supporter. All right, so when it comes to finding your voice, you're gonna have to take a deep breath. But if you've done the assessment phase, right? And you've done the confirmation phase, then the execution phase should be pretty quick and should be pretty easy. So those two first phases, the, 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 the um, assessment phase, quite frankly, is the most important. And you might find it takes me about 24 to 36 hours for my head to catch up with my heart. And that's the honest to God's truth. And when I learned that, oh, yo, yo, what a difference that made in my life and in my relationships. So give yourself time on this. Really do an assessment. What's the situation externally? What's the context? What's my issue internally? Is this really about this or am I still reacting to something that happened to me at the last place I worked? And then confirm it with people that you trust internal to the ex ex to the organization and external to the organization and this is not about gossip this is this requires discretion on your part because you don't want your boss to hear about this from anybody but you otherwise pain in the butt employee right that's what we don't want we want to be good employees so and then the execution which of course is respectful is hopeful is collaborative all of the things that you want people to do for you, you're gonna do for other people, right? So, you know, there's the golden rule, don't do to others what you wouldn't want done to you. And I, and I think that's, that's nice, but what I think is even harder is the flip side, do to others what you want done to you, right? So, be respectful, be helpful, right? Be, Demonstrate the value that you want implemented. Demonstrate what recovery looks like so that people can be like, oh, well, that's very interesting. And then, you know, at some point, if it doesn't go the way you want it to go, then you need to make a new plan and a new assessment and a new confirmation and a new execution. 
But right now, let's just talk about this one, right? Advocating for yourself at work. What does that look like and how do you do it? So if you found this helpful, I hope you did. I'm going to be creating um, an infomatic that goes with it. Uh, inf uh, never mind that. It, it's, it's just going to be some, a piece of paper that you can download that's going to go with it. But what I want you to know is that um, I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you did, there is, uh, I want you to check out the CARES Toolkit, carestoolkit.com. And this is just one of 12 modules in which we provide you with a one hour workshop and a whole bunch of resources. So I hope that, and the person who did this one did it very differently, so you'll get even different information. But I want you to understand that uh, we have lots of resources for you here at Holding the Hope. And I loved coming to you live, and I'm sorry I was so distracted about my fuzzy face and my itchy nose. <laughs> but it's good seeing you. All right, everybody. Stay hopeful.